Hey guys and welcome back to another video. I'm Sukesh Education and today we will be looking at the night sky. Many of you wonder that the night sky is just all about the moon, the stars and the darkness. Well that's the background right here but the darkness. But no, you're wrong. It's not about the sun or the moon or just the darkness. It's about how our universe works. There's much more to the night sky and we will uncover some some minimal facts about the night sky. So let's get into the video. Okay, so we have some documents here which we're going to read from the start to the end. So it's going to take quite a bit of time, but we're going to read it in a fun and interesting manner. Okay, the night sky. It's chapter 15. The night sky has fascinated men since ancient times. They have observed the moon, the sun, the stars, the planets and their moment very carefully. Sailors out at sea with no land in sight use the position of the stars to find the direction in which they were sailing. Farmers scan the skies to look for the clues that help them predict seasonal changes. These help them to plant and harvest their crops. The position of the sun and the changes in the shadows we used to tell the time. Today, the study of the universe is still relevant for it helps us to understand more about how our world works. To start with, you need to go out and look at the night sky. On a clear night, you can see countless stars and the moon. An easy way to locate some of the brightest stars is to spot some of the patterns they make. Stars often appear in clusters forming recognizable shapes and patterns. Such clusters or stars are called constellations. The stars of a constellation remain in the same relative position to each other. You cannot see all the constellations in the night sky at the same time. Which constellations you see depends on the time of the year, the time of the night and where you are on the earth. The picture here shows you some recognized constellations. See if you can spot them in the night sky with some help from your adults. So the picture is this one, guys. So, yep. This is your picture. As you can see, there are many stars here, right? What they make is they form a pattern, don't they? These patterns are called constellations. Some of the famous constellations are the Great Bear, also known as Ursa Major or the Big Dipper. You can find seven stars arranged in a pattern called the Plough or the Spatarishi. So this is what they called the seven stars. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See you guys? All of them are only seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, a constellation, this is a special type of constellations, but there are many more constellations with many other things. Now, we have an activity which we can do, and they're telling us, study the movement of the stars. On a clear night, go out and look at the stars. Find a pattern of stars that recognize you. Look at the constellations shown above. Observe the moment of the constellations at one hour intervals till midnight. Try getting up before dawn to look for its position then. What do you observe? So guys, this is an activity which you guys as viewers can try. But I already tried it because, you know, I am very smart. Yeah. So now let's move on to the next one. Yep. Yeah. So they're telling us, if you live in a big city, the bright light, smoke and dust make it difficult to see the stars. Visit a planetarium or try to go out on a city tour with friends and adults. That's actually quite a good thing as, you know, in your city, right? I'm living in Epping and wherever you, might, you guys might be living, it's always polluted. And if you're living in like Sydney, it's absolutely polluted as it's one of the main cities in Australia and the world. So it has to be populated. No, no, polluted. So there are many planetariums in Sydney too. So we, you can go and watch them. 
Then we have another activity which is to keep an umbrella and then move your head, like turn the umbrella from the top so that you can observe how the stars move because, you know, the stars are a billion trillion light years away from us. That's why they seem so small. In real life, they're really big. An interesting fact is, you know the sun, right? You might, you guys might have already know, knew this, but it's for some of the people who don't know that. So, yeah. So you can actually see how the stars move using this example. Okay, so next. Okay, next we have the pole star or Polaris. So it's about the solar system now. The Polaris is one star that doesn't seem to move. It lies almost directly above and in line with the North Pole. For years, sailors have used this star to measure the latitude of a place. Smart, right? Olden people in olden days have been really smart. I agree with that. The stars which you can see are just small portions of 200 billion stars that make up our galaxy, which is the Milky Way. There are several galaxies in the universe separated by empty space. Astronomers have not as yet discovered all the stars and galaxy, galaxies that make up our universe. I don't think anyone will. Even after like 100 years, no one will actually get all the galaxies because, you know, this is a never-ending story. We know this Andromeda, which we named it ourselves, Andromeda nearby. But yeah, now let's move on to the next subheading, which is our solar system. So the solar system is made up of many different kinds of bodies. The sun, the planets, and many moons encycling the planets. Astronomers who study the skies are still encountering new heavenly boundary bodies in remote spaces of the in remote parts of the space. The sun is the closest star to the Earth. Astronomers and scientists study the sun in order to understand the nature of the stars in general. The sun, like most most stars, is made up of mostly hydrogen. The temperatures at its center is about 14,000, 14 million degrees Celsius, while its surface, no, 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 while its surface is relatively cooler at about 5,500, 5,500 degrees. There are small dark patches on the sun called dark sunspots. Sunspots have been found to cause disruptions in radio communications and produce weather changes on Earth. Yes, the sun plays a major role in our life, like in Earth. Sometimes, great swirls of hot gases leap out of the sun's surface. These are called promises. Then we have activity three. They ask us, does the sun rise from the same place every day? Look for a place where you can see the sun rising. When you see the sun rising, draw a rough sketch of the landscape in the background with the position of the sun. Yeah, guys, that's a fun thing. Have you ever watched what do you call? I have personally seen the sunrise, like not just a normal sunrise. You go to a place where you can actually see the sunrise in the city at the first stage. So that's like a pretty cool thing to do, guys. So going into the actual first place and then watching. Now, the next subtopic is studying the planets. Planets are celestial or heavenly bodies that revolve around the sun in their elliptical orbits. The sun, no, the planets also rotate or spin on their own axis. We all know that. We all know that the Earth, right? It's not straight. It's kind of bent like that, and the axis is there. Axis is like there. And the Earth, that's why the Earth spins at 360 degrees. I'm using the Microsoft Pen, guys, so it doesn't look that good. But Okay, so next question they're asking us, how many planets are there in our solar system? Guys, okay. How many planets are there in our solar system? Do you guys know how many there are? 
Guess, guess. Bro, it's very easy. Someone's name starting with the R I C H I A N does know this. Yep, it's nine. Nope, it's eight, guys. Easy peasy. Eight. Okay, so there are eight planets which we all know. Pluto is not a planet. Unlike stars, planets have no light of their own. But can you see some of them? But you can see some of them clearly in the night sky. Can you explain why? For this question, guys, I want you guys to find the answers. I know what the answer is because I do. Because, you know, Jupiter, right? Why does Jupiter does not have its own light? Jupiter doesn't, but how can we see? You might tell it's big stuff, but the actual reason is planets reflect the light from the sun. So planets don't actually need to take in the light. They reflect the light from the sun. Then we have exercise four. Which of the following statements about the earth is correct? Now, what do you guys think? Take a moment and look at these. Yep. Have you guys found it? Well, the actual answer is A, D, and F are incorrect. As you know, A, right? The earth revolves around its own axis. It doesn't. Then A, D. The earth moves around the sun in a circular orbit. It doesn't, does it? And then last one is F. The revolution of the earth causes day and night. Yup. So, which of the following statements about the earth are incorrect? So guys, that is the correct answer. Next, we have... No, no, no. After exercise 4, we have exercise 5, which you guys can do on your own. But also, guys, I need you guys to remember this. The speed of a light is 300,000 kilometers per second. So it takes a little more than 8 minutes for the light from the sun to reach us, the Earth. For this, you can make up an approximate calculation of the distance between the sun and the Earth. So if it's 8 minutes from there to here, all we do is 300,000 times 60, because 1 hour 60 minutes, times 8, because that's the speed of the light, which gives us 144 million kilometers. So you can stay with that light for a long time. Yup, guys. Now, the next question we have there, you can answer it all on your own. I know that. Then we have another question. Another planet that has not been added to the table is that long. How long do you think it'll take this planet to come? Well, you guys can find this answer on your own. If you're not able to find it, I'll post the answers in the description below so you can check it out there. Because I can't be explaining you guys everything, right? Exercise six, which of these represents the correct order of the planets in the solar system? This question is especially for the three boys in the class of 7-0 in Epping Boys High School. So if you three boys can answer this, that means you're smart. So there's only first two is Mercury and Venus, Mercury, so it starts, so three and four. And from this, we know Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune. So we got a, we have a confusion here. Is it Uranus or Neptune? Guys, is it Uranus or Neptune? Rachan, what do you think it is? Quick Rachan. Okay. So Rachan thinks it's Uranus. And Jaden thinks it's Neptune. Good guys, you both are wrong. Okay, then we have activity four, which is to make a solar system. So this, we all have actually done this in our lives, maybe, but I have. When I was back in India, we had this kind of a showcase thing. So we had to make all the solar systems in like one line. So the solar systems are hanging down. So that's what they're asking us here, because we can then understand the solar system in depth and better. Then, guys, there are there is like a bit more information about the moon. The changes in the shape and size of the moon are called its phases. As the moon 
circles the earth, the moon appears to change its shape because of the way the sun shines on it. When the moon and the sun are on opposite sides of the earth, the sun shines directly on the moon's surface, resulting in a full moon. When the area of the lighted surface of the moon is increasing, it is said to be waxing. As the lighted area decreases, it's said to be vanning. On your individual charts, mark the days which you saw the full moon and the new moon. When was the moon waxing and when was it vanning? From the Earth, we always see the same phase of the moon. This is because the moon takes 29 days to rotate on its axis and the same time to orbit the Earth. So what they mean, guys, you might think that you know the moon, right? There, it's rotating 360 degrees like that. No, this moon, right? It doesn't actually, it doesn't actually rotate. Okay, guys. So it doesn't actually rotate. Next question is one second, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back in. Yep. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to start reading again, guys. Do you want to, do you guys want to start reading? Okay. So let's present from the same slide. So the changes in the sh shape and size of the moon are called its faces. As the moon, we already read this, right, guys? Yeah. Okay. Next, we are t they're asking us. Yeah, yeah. As I was explaining, the moon ray it doesn't actually rotate. It only goes around the Earth. So it doesn't rotate. So you don't actually see all the sides. Then we have given the rotation on how the moon rotates and stuff right there how the moon's rotating and where the sunlight comes in how the moon stinks so if you guys are unsure then you can learn from there then we have activity six which is quite kind of fun but let's move on to the next page okay guys so activity six they're asking us something but we don't need that because we're already smart enough. Then activity seven is there, which is about making a model to observe the faces of the moon. That's kind of boring. You don't need to do that. Okay, then they've given us this exciting activity about the eclipses. The eclipses is one of the most famous, the most interesting things that I've ever encountered about the moon and the solar system and our Earth's only satellite. The moment of the Earth and the Moon causes eclipses. A solar eclipse happens when the Moon passes directly between the Earth and the Sun, casting a shadow on the surface of the Earth. People living on the Earth find their view of the Sun blocked. So, this is an image on my left hand side, which you can see right there, about the Moon and the rise of the fall and the sea level. This is a really important thing for you guys to know. But anyway, so activity seven, guys. Don't forget to do that because that's really fun. And then we just saw about the eclipses. Then we have about the sun. So this is the image, guys, which I've been wanting to show you guys. You see this moon, right? The moon's over here. So the solar eclipse is when the sunlight coming to the earth is blocked totally, totally by the earth, totally by the sun. So you can see right here the sunlight, right? It's coming to the moon, to the earth, and the moon's blocking it. So as the sun's bigger in size than the moon, you can see this fully dark spot and some rings of fire around it. So this is called a solar eclipse. It occurs every 10 years or something. But there's also called a lunar eclipse. So a lunar eclipse happens every year, guys. So activity seven explains us about the lunar eclipse. This is what happens in the lunar eclipse. It's a totally different 
stuff okay guys it's totally different from what happens in the solar eclipse because solar is like 10 one, 10 years once lunar eclipse is yearly in lunar eclipse it's not that major so that's that's one what you call the fully visible totally eclipse partially eclipse it's kind of confusing but when you study about it guys you would understand then we have about the other objects in the night sky we all know about the shooting star, the Venus and the stuff. This is the night sky on the right hand side. But let's read the text. Um, can you identify the object shown in the picture? It is a shooting star you may sometimes see in the night sky. These shooting stars are called meteoroids. Meteor fragments from outer space are made up of metal or stone. A meteor is pulled into the air around the Earth by gravity. As it enters the Earth's atmosphere, it gets red hot and burns due to the friction with the atmosphere. Sometimes, meteors burn up before they reach the ground. Some meteors, meteors, I can't pronounce the word, which land on the Earth are called meteorites. Comets, which make, with comets are made of ice and rocky material. They generally have large elongated orbits around the sun. As they get closer to the sun, their heat starts to evaporate the surface and a huge tail of steamy gas is given off. This tail always points away, away from the sun because the dust and the gas particles are pushed away by the solar winds. Then we have a little bit of information about the asteroids. Asteroids are a chunk of rocks that have never managed to come together as planets. Most of them travel in an asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. You might have all heard of the asteroid belt, right? It's around Mars and Jupiter. So they're, they're telling us that this hole was caused by a meteoroid hitting an house. But it quite of looks fake, but it does happen, guys. It looks way too fake, but it does happen. Now, guys, that's the end of our video. But before we go off... I want to give you guys a little bit test on this astronomy things that you have just read. Okay, guys. So the first question we've been given is read the clues given below each picture and identify it. This was the first telescope launched by NASA in 1990. So what is it? It's the Hubble Space Telescope. You guys all know it. This is the first Indian satellite launched into the orbit near the Earth on 19 April 1975 and it is Arya Bhatta. Then question number C is, she is the second woman of Indian origin to go into the space and she is Sunita Williams. Then we have D, they're asking us, he is the first person who put forward the theory that it is the sun and not the earth that is the center of the universe. And his name is Copernicus. Copernicus. You guys remember it. Copernicus. Okay. The next question, E, same question number one, is they're asking us, the ball shown represents a planet that would fall, that will float if put in water. Which planet is it? Is it less dense or more, more dense than water? So for this question... The planet is actually Saturn. It is less dense than Saturn. Less, de less dense than water. Interesting fact, right, guys? A f Saturn will float on water as it's less dense. Then F. This bright star is part of the constellation Orion. What we have to find out? What do we have to find out, guys? Uh, read the clues and identify it. Okay, this is the Raj. Okay, guys, remember it's the Raj. Then G, last question for part A, is he was the first person who was launched into space on 12 April 1961 aboard the spaceship Vostok, Vostok 1. So do you guys know who this guy is? He is Yuri he is Yuri Gar Gargan. Maybe you guys might not know this. He is Yuri. 
you guys look at the next question which is Yuri so you can just keep his name as Yuri guys the next question they're asking us find the odd one out okay find the odd one out and we have been given four options the odd one out right here is a Skylab Columbia and International Space Station are space stations. Columbia is a space shuttle which orbits the Earth, returns and can be used. And these can be used for further space flights. So the answer, so this is a notebook which I'm using guys. It's quite interesting. It's all about science and stuff. It's long man science active class 8 and stuff so yes guys this guys you have to find it out on your own i'm not going to give you the answers today then name the hottest planet do you guys know what's the hottest planet in the thing yep it's the venus then the two astronauts you were the first men to land on the moon neil armstrong then c the twin land rovers sent to the study the surface of Mars in 2004. Do you guys know what they are? Well, it was spirit and opportunity. Remember, spirit and opportunity. Then D, the unnamed space mission sent to study Saturn and its moon on 15th October 1997. Well, it is Cassini-Hugens. H-U-I-G-E-N-S. Cassini, Hygens. Then E, the red planet. All of us know that the red planet's Mars, so that's not quite a surprise. Then F, the reaction that occurs in the core of a star that makes the hot star. Well, it is nuclear fusion. Then G, hydrogen. Now G is hydrogen, do you know why? They ask us the element that burns as fuel in stars, and it's hydrogen. Then we have the galaxy in which our solar system is related, is in. And we all know that it's the Milky Way. Well, some dumb people out there are thinking it's the Milky Way chocolate, but no, guys. It's the Milky Way galaxy. Then the last question is the nebula that has been named after a spider. We have to find it out, and that is Tarantula Nebula. Tarantula Nebula. Then question 4 to 14, we have to tick. What are comments, comments made of? We all know that it's ice and dust. Then they're asking us, what happens when a comment goes towards the sun? They told us that it melts, right? So just checking the answer once again. A and then that's A. So it develops a tail. Then in 6, it's B as how many types of galaxies are there? Three types. Then... Seven, right? What type of galaxy is the Milky Way galaxy? It is a spiral galaxy, as it's in a spiral shape. Then eight, what is the solar system? Well, the solar system is made up of the sun and everything that travels around it. So that's the right answer, D. Then for question number nine, how many moons does Mercury have? Well, Mercury, right? It has... It actually has none. Surprising. What is the Earth mostly made of? Is it water, plains, mountain ranges, land? Well, we all can say that it's sea as humans are made mostly of water. So Earth must have been mostly of water. And when you see the world map, it's fully blue. Why is it? Water people. Then question 11, they're asking us, which planet has the most moons? I guess it's Uranus, or Jupiter, or Saturn, or Neptune, but it's up to you guys. But the actual answer is Saturn. Yep. Nope. Jupiter. Trick there. The actual answer is Jupiter, guys. Then, we have question 12, which asks us, distance, distances in space are measured by light years. What is a light year? To be concise, a light year is a distance light can travel through space in a year. So that's a light year, guys. Then question number 13 is, which two planets are gas giants? 
It's not Mercury Venus, nor Saturn and Mars. The actual answer is Saturn and Jupiter. Yep, Saturn and Jupiter. Then 14th question is, which of the one of which of the following statements is not correct? Well, in question 14, in the D, Polaris is not the brightest star in the sky. They never mention that the Polaris is the brightest star in the sky, so we cannot conclude that is the answer. And then question number 15, it's what are they asking us? Oh, there's no question number 15. They're asking us, match the items in the column. Okay, guys, let's match it. As we are geniuses. So, A, right, guys? A spring and quang. Okay, okay, okay. So, when was the spring and even quang, even knocks? These are quite tricky, guys. So, you can just follow what I'm doing. It's summer, autumn, and winter. So, when are these sections? First is 21 March, and then for the second one, B, it is 21 June, and the third one, C, it is 23rd September, and the first one, on the, no, no, the last one is, as you might guess, 22 December. So guys, that's the end of my video. Thank you for watching, and if you like my video, subscribe to my channel, Sir Cash Education. That's all from our thing. And just for a bit of a recap, let's take a quick recap from the notes which I made. So, the stars of our constellations remain in the same relative positions to each other. Then, the Great Bear or Ursa Major are the seven bright star patterns. Then, you know, the Pole Star, right? Or the Polaris doesn't seem to move. This is in the North Pole. Sailors use this to find the latitude of places. Then we have been given 200 billion stars, many galaxies, all make up our universe. Then sun is made mostly of hydrogen. Then the center of the sun is 14 million degrees Celsius, while the surface is relatively cooler at about 5,500 degrees Celsius. Then the small dark patches on the sun are called suns sunspots. Giant gases leap out of the earth of the sun to create Prometheus. Then eight minutes for the sunlight to come to earth. So this is the time that light takes to come to earth. Then moon changes size and shapes. This action is called phases. Waxing and running take place and the moon takes 29 days to rotate on an axis. Then the moment of the earth and moon cause eclipses. A solar eclipse is when the moon phase passes directly between the sun and the earth. In this occasion, the sun is blocked. The sunlight is blocked. Then, the shooting stars of our meteors. They are metal or stone pulled towards earth by gravity. They burn out or melt when they enter our earth's atmosphere. Some meteors which hit the earth are called meteorites. Comments are made mostly of ice and rocky material, and to conclude, asteroids are tons of rocks in the in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. So, guys, that's the end of our story. Thank you for watching, and it's a cash education. Okay, thank you, guys. So, be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys. That's the end of the night sky. Thank you.